Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead when he raised from the dead. 
There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of his disciples, Judith Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bare what was put therein. <coughs> then Jesus said, let her alone. I guess the day of my burying has she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you, but ye, but me, you have not always. Yeah. 
John chapter 3, 12 and verse 3. John chapter 12 and verse 3. I tell folk we, um, that they can you know, look at the front of your Bible, look at the front, or look at your Bible, because I don't want you all to think I'm making stuff up. You know, so if you look at your Bible, you can follow me. You know, and make, and I don't want you all to think I'm, stuff is coming out of nowhere. You know, I say it's coming from the Word, and I want you all to, to realize that. Amen? Amen. John chapter 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 3. And it states, Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then took Jesus a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. We're going to speak from the topic this morning. There's a Judas for every Mary. There is a Judas for every Mary. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Father our God, we just ask now that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. My Lord and my Redeemer, the Lord of God's children, say amen. amen. There is a Judas for every man. As we journey through life, we will always encounter people who misconstrue or just plain misinterpret another person's good deeds. How many times in the church is someone trying to help somebody, and there's another person looking on from the outside, criticizing or making it out to be something that it is not. Yes. How many times in the church uh, does someone's gossip discourage others from helping people in need? Yeah. I'm here to let you know, even in the church, uh, there's a Judas for every Martha, for every Mary. See y'all quiet. That's a good thing. Jesus died in a home in Bethany. Both Matthew and Mark also record this anointing of Jesus. Note that John says it actually took place six days before the Passover. Matthew arranged his gospel by subjects. So he placed it in the midst of discussing Jesus' death. Matthew and Mark say that Jesus was in the house of Simon the leper. And John says, Martha served. Apparently, Simon the leper was the husband of Martha. Jesus was with Lazarus, the young man whom he had raised from the dead. Jesus was facing the Passover. He was only six days away from becoming the Passover lamb who came to take away the sins of the world. Mary had criticized and accused Jesus for neglecting her family when he had not come to the aid of her brother Lazarus sooner. And here she is seen repenting for her sin. How many 
many of you know people who never admit that they are wrong beside the one in the White House. <laughs> uh, even when it is uh, proven without uh, the shadow of a doubt, uh, church, sometimes we must admit that we are wrong. Amen? Amen. Uh, I, I have a friend who, who often says confession is good for the soul but bad for your reputation. Uh, you ought to get that when you all wake up. <laughs> Confession is good for the soul, but bad for your reputation. Sometimes our reputations need to take a hit in order to move closer to God. Mary expresses a sacrificial and costly love. Note the words in the text, very costly. The ointment was a perfume or oil. 300 pence or denarii equaled one year's wage. One denarii was the average pay for one's day of labor. A bottle of perfume worth a whole year's wage was being poured on, on Jesus' feet and she was wiping his feet with her hair. Now think of the costly sacrifice being made. Perfume was the most precious thing to an Eastern woman. Mary was taking her most precious possession and giving it to Jesus. Mary was giving the best that she had. Too many of us are coming to church with our leftovers. We run up MasterCard and Visa and American Express, pay them, uh, and if there's anything less, uh, we'll put it in an, an envelope and call it a tie. Oh, I'm here to tell you that's not a tie, that's a tip. God, God wants his 10% off the top. Well, right. oh, church, God wants our best. Uh, before my mortgage gets paid, I pay my tithe. Before my car note gets paid, I, I pay my tithe. Before my charge cards get paid, I pay my, I pay my tithe. Before I go on vacation or go away, I pay my tithe. Uh, once my tithes are paid, God provides everything else. Even if I think that I'm going to be short one month, God will provide. Oh, I'm here to let you know, if you pay God what's owed to God, God will provide the rest. But if you give it God a chip, you ain't going to have no money for your... For, 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 your, for your master God, you're going to be there the, the, the man no more, and it's going to stay there forever. Right. But when you pay God for it, God will make sure you got some extra money in your pocket. You may not know where it comes from, but it'll always be with him right on time. Mary's anointing was an act of love and faith in the Lord Jesus. Mary anointed Jesus to show how deeply she loved him and, and believed that he was the true Messiah, the anointed one of God. He was her Savior. He was her Lord. He was her King. He had done so much for her and her family that, that she wanted him to know how much she appreciated and loved him. How, how do y'all show your love uh, for Christ for all that he's done for you. Oh, if you don't think he's done anything, at least he can say that he woke you up this morning and started you on your way. At least you can say that you're it's somewhat in a, a, a some right of, right of mind. At least you knew enough to get here if you can't get anywhere else. What do we do to, to show our love and our faith to Christ? Imagine, imagine. How difficult it was to, for Mary to do what she did in the presence of so many men. She set aside her pride and embarrassment in order to demonstrate her love and her faith in Jesus. How far are we willing to go in order to show our love and our faith for Christ? Mary gave the most precious possession she had. She gave it to the Lord and she gave it willingly. Mm -hmm. Mary uh, publicly uh, bore uh, the witness of her love and her faith. Her, her love and her faith in Christ was demonstrated to all that were there. Mary wasn't hiding that she loved Jesus. Mary wasn't hiding that she thought that he was the Messiah. Mary wasn't hiding that she was a follower. Mm -hmm. uh, too many of us, if we go into certain circles, they would know we were a uh, Christian or went to church at all. Uh, we might be in church every Sunday, but certain folk wouldn't know. Uh, amen, Mons. Y'all know I'm right. 
Uh, I, I remember one time uh, uh, somebody came to uh, to a church, uh, you know, and, and one of his friends was was at the church, and, and the brother said, "Oh, I didn't know you were going to church. I thought you'd be the last one in church." <laughs> the guy was seat, sitting up front as a deacon. Church, we ought to hide our love for Christ. We ought to let everyone that we know that we serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is risen. Whatever men may say, I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice and cheer and every time I need him. He's always there. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. He talks with me a long life. Now away. He lives. He lives. Salvation to a part. You ask me. Now I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In contrast to Mary, there was the hypocritical unbelieving disciple by the name of Judas. A study of Judas's character in these verses reveals that it was that what also often causes a disciple to become hypocritical and unbelieving. In other words, uh, church, there are people in the church that will ever make other people become hypocritical and unbelieving. Judas followed Jesus, but he criticized other believers. Anybody know folk like that? Anybody are folk like that? Uh, he, he was a professing believer, but, but when he disagreed with others, he criticized them. He criticized even those who had great devotion and love for the Lord. He criticized those who repented to the point of making a great sacrificial Yes, if, if, if people were, were, were going above and beyond, uh, he criticized them. How many of y'all have seen people just sit in the back with their, their nose up and looking down at somebody else who's doing all, all the work and criticize what they're doing? Amen. Mark pointed out that Judas was especially strong in his criticism. Uh, he says that Judas was indignant, that Judas was growling and that Judas was rebuking and, and scolding. Uh, in other words, Judas was upset. A, a criticism is a sign of hypocrisy for all stand in need of repentance and devotion. All of us need to give more. When we come up short ourselves, how can we possibly uh, criticize what, what other people do and their mistakes? Oh, Lord, the temptations had it right when they said, if you're living in a glass house, don't throw no stones. Amen. Well, Amen. Be <laughs> Judas expressed concern for the ministry, but he had it on an ulterior motive. Again, imagine what's going on here. A bottle of perfume worth a whole year's wage was being poured over Judas' feet. Jesus' feet. Uh, common sense. And this wasn't that, that cheap stuff, amen? Right. This is a whole year. So I, you, this wasn't that stuff. Now, none of y'all wear this. Um, none of the people yeah. in co-op say we're dead. I mean, <laughs> but you know that cheap stuff you smell when you're in the elevator? <laughs> so, somebody got on some of that cheap perfume and you saw a cloud and not to hold your nose and get away from the And when they got that cheap perfume on, that's the very time it stopped at almost every stop when you're on the 24th floor. <laughs> They stopped almost every floor. And then somebody got the nerve to hold the elevator. We come out the to lock their door. It wasn't that stuff. This was the stuff that you would have liked the floor to stay on every floor because you, you know, the stuff that you all wear. The good stuff. Man. That's right. Common sense would seem to say sell it. Use the money for the poor, the hungry, and the homeless. This is just what G Judas said. He, he questioned the act, what he considered a waste. But after all, if Mary wished to anoint Jesus, she could have used some less expensive perfume. Mm -hmm. yeah. However, Jesus, Judas's motive was impure. Mm -hmm. uh, the words had the bag. That means that 
Judas was the treasurer of the small band of Jesus' <laughs> disciples. But he was also a thief. Uh, he had been swindling some of the money. Uh, a gift of 300 denarii would have allowed him a chance to steal some of the money. So, so Judas wasn't worried about him giving it to Paul. Uh, he, uh, he was messing with Ju Judas' money. Amen? <laughs> Judas said, wait a minute, this is a year's salary. Uh, you know, I'm going to get my 25%. Uh, y'all, y'all, y'all don't get with me here. Yeah. All right, right. So, 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 so he was messing with Judas. You know when, what, 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 what does um, what does it say that line in the, the movie? I get mean when you mess with my green. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, Judas was getting mean because Jesus was messing with his green. <laughs> Deep within the. Within, he was angry, lost the chance to enrich himself. He was angry at Mary, but he was even more angry at Jesus for allowing what he considered such wastefulness. Mm. Oh, how many people express concern for the ministry, who, who, uh, but do not do so in order to gain from it? Uh, how many people come into the church, not for Jesus, but for what they think they can get from Jesus? Their concern is, is shown by joining the church and making some contribution or by showing interest in some ministry or need. However, their motive is to be socially acceptable. Their motive is to be recognized and honored. Their motive is to please some family members to get them off their back and stop, so they stop telling them to come to church. Amen, Walt. Their, their motives are to gain some credit with God. Their motives is to get a, a tax write-off from the government. Uh, their motive is not to be there for Jesus, but to be there uh, for some other ulterior motive. Jesus worked for Jesus, but did not love Jesus. Don't think everybody who's smiling in your face, sitting next to you in that pew, likes you. <laughs> I ain't even going to go as far as say love you. you. Don't think that everybody uh, who's working with you likes you. Jesus uh, was strong with Judas. He said, let her alone. The reason for this sharp rebuke was that Judas did not understand. And, and the reason he did not understand because he did not love Jesus. See, some folks will sit right next to you but, but really know, not know what you're about. You know, they, they don't know the good that you do. They don't, they don't know uh, that you're doing things out of your heart and, and not because not, not, they know that if they were doing it, they would want something. But they, don't, they can't understand it. They, they don't have the spirit of God in that, that just does stuff sacrificially, does stuff without expecting something in return. Just because someone works for Jesus does not mean that he or she loves Jesus. Jesus said, she did it for my burial. He said that her love and her faith, the anointing of his, hope, his body, are pointed towards his death. In other words, Mary's love and faith and her gift and anointing were a witness of anticipation. She was witnessing to the Lord's death by looking ahead to it. Church, we are called to be like Mary, not Judas. We're called uh, to be a help and not a hindrance. We're called to lift up the downtrodden. We're called to feed the hungry. We're called to love one another as Christ has loved us. We're called to assist others, not criticize them. We're called to bring others in, not push others out. We're called to let others know that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? We're called to tell others about the goodness of Jesus. We're called to be a living testimony about how God has blessed us. Tell them about how God woke you up this morning and started you on their way. Tell them about how you were sick. It was God that healed you. Tell them about how when you're broke, God put food on your table and clothes on your back. Or tell them about how even when you didn't have a job, God provided a job for you that was better paid than the one you had before. Or tell them about it, how he, when your, your broke your children or weren't doing well now, they're doing well. Tell them about how God has blessed you. Tell them about how God has used you. Tell them that you were in a rocket side. It was God that helped you provide the grace of God and you are where you are now. I tell them that it's God without God. You are nothing without God. You are there. But with God on your side, one is a majority with God on your side. You can do all things with God on your side. You're blessed coming in and you're blessed going out.
somebody as I pass along. If I can help somebody with a word or song, if I can help somebody with glory wrong, then my living will not be in vain. Lost the opportune time. Mary grafted. Mary loved Jesus and Judas did not. Jesus made a significant point that is often missed. Opportunities come and go. And once they're gone, they're gone. God places people in our lives. God places people in our path for, for us to help them, to, for us to be a, a blessing to them. And when that person is gone, when they're, they're out of our grasp, we're going to be judged if we helped them while they were here. Amen. Not criticized, yes. not talked about, but if we went out and did what Christ would have us to do, if we helped them in ways that we didn't expect anything back, we were helping them out of the goodness of our heart. Mary demonstrated the difference. The poor would always be present for believers to help, but the privilege of ministering to Jesus would not always be available. The disciples were to minister to him. They, they had to grasp the opportunity while he still was with them. In closing, church, we must grasp the opportunity to show our love and our sacrifice for Christ when it presents itself. Sometimes it's just buying a meal for somebody who's home. Uh, sometimes it's just sending a card. Sometimes it's just making a phone call. Sometimes it's just letting someone know that you've missed them and when you haven't seen them. Sometimes it's just simple things. It, it's not things that will cost you anything every time. Sometimes it just costs you five minutes. Sometimes it's taking somebody to the doctor. Sometimes it's just lifting somebody's spirits and going out to lunch or going by to, to just spend an hour with them. It's not always the grand things that make the difference. Sometimes it's just the little things that can change a person's life. Sometimes it's just giving them a hug because you don't know what's been going on in the home all week. The opportunity will pay. The servant of the Lord must always love and act while it is still day. For the evening comes when each one of us will not be able to work anymore. We've got to work while the day is done. Because we never know when evening is going to. The doors of the church.